Today we have a major update on the William Nylander contract extension as well as could we see a big trade incoming for the Toronto Maple Leafs and a Leafs rookie continues to make his way up this lineup. So you're going to want to stick around for this episode of Hattrick HQ. But before we get into that, we just want to say if you're one of the thousands of people watching that aren't subscribed, make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button, become a part of the Hattrick HQ community because me and Mark will be here all season long keeping you up to date on what's happening around the league but with that said let's get right into the first topic of the video today and that is nice moves up and as we take a look at the lines from the Leafs practice this morning obviously Tyler Bertuzzi is absent so that's why he is not uh, on, on that top line with Matthews and Marner and as we see too John Klingberg is sticking with Mark Giordano down on that third pairing and Lilligren moves up to the second pairing with McCabe but the big thing to look at here is Matthew Nyes moving up on that second line with Tavares and Nylander. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know how big Matthew Nyes fans, me and Mark, are. And we're so happy that he got this opportunity to move up to, to that second line to play with talents like John Tavares and William Nylander. And I really think that this uh, jump in the lineup is really going to uh, jumpstart this guy's young career. Yeah, we kind of seen it last year where he started in the playoffs with Tavares and Nylander, and the line just looked overall incredible. They were great on the offensive end, of course, and a guy like Tavares and Nylander is going to bring that every game. And Nyes kind of brings the grittiness, just a hard-hitting game, and his defensive game is improving as the season's going on. So overall, I do like this line a lot. It kind of just balances things out. You move Yaron Kroak back down to the third with a guy like Domi and Minton. You're hoping this kind of jump starts a bit of offense down here as well, and you keep everything else the same when it comes to the forwards. I do like dropping Klingberg down. You can kind of run him as a power play specialist, get more O-Zone starts and not have to rely too much on his defensive game. And just moving a guy up with like Lilgren up with McCabe, I think overall they can play off each other so well. They're both great defensively. They're guys that if one step up, you can trust the next to kind of defend back a bit. So overall, I do like these line changes. We touched on it in video yesterday a little bit as well. But I think this is going to benefit the team. And it's at the point now you almost need to try something. Yeah, definitely have to agree. Obviously, they only have that one loss so far, so doing a little shake isn't going to hurt. I think it's really going to help them uh, going into their next game, but uh, one thing that I like about Matthew Nice and what he brings to his second line is that forechecking ability. He really gets into the corners and battles for the puck, and there's a couple times we've seen him get that puck, flick it out in front, and cause a nice uh, goal-scoring opportunity, and if you're doing that to a guy like William Nylander, that's going to go in the back of the net a lot of the time. Yeah, especially him and Tavares, like you're saying. If you get these guys a puck in front of that, there's a high chance this is going in. So, yeah, I do like it. Just the grittiness. He's going to get into the corners and kind of let Nylander float around. And not in a bad way when I say float around, but, I mean, kind of cause havoc in front of the net because we've seen his shot so far. We've seen the dangles he can do. He's just a lethal weapon so far, and this season he's been even better. So this guy getting dangerous opportunities in front is always great. You have Tavares and Nyes just kind of battle in the corners, get the puck out front. And like I said, with the deep appearance, I do like this a lot more Klingberg still gets his minutes on the power play like I say you get a lot of ozone starts with him and then you get more of a defensive sound second pairing yeah, and like you said, I really love this move for Matthew Nyes. Uh, I really do think that having uh, a nice young, big uh, body type player, a uh, power forward type up with Tavares and Nylander is great because not only is he going to help offensively, but defensively as well, and he's also going to protect those guys if anybody goes after him. But we're going to get into our second topic of the video here, and that is huge Nylander contract update. And as we take a look at this uh, article here, it says he's the dirty secret of that negotiation in my opinion the Leafs know he doesn't want to play anywhere else the Leafs are the only ones who can sign him to an eight-year deal so what the Leafs can pay him over eight years and what another team uh, if he leaves on July 1st as a free agent could pay him over seven years is not really that different right if the Leafs give him 9.5 on an eight-year deal, that's 76 million. So a team on a seven-year deal would have to pay him 10 million AAV to get that almost uh, 11 million. And Mark, we're going to take a look at William Nylander because obviously this guy has been uh, really bright and he's been shining in through these first few games of the season. He has six points in three games so far. But obviously the big news around William Nylander right now is, is he going to sign an extension? And just from hearing this quote, it really does seem like we will see Neely William Nylander staying in Toronto. 
Yeah, Elliot Freeman in this article was pretty much just saying how much he loves Toronto and everything. And I know a lot of people are saying Nylander's camp and the Leafs camp are kind of staying quiet. They don't want this to go into the media and then constantly talk about this and kind of put a distraction on the team. But overall, I do think this is going to get hammered out. Like I said, Nylander loves the city. He loves Toronto. He loves this team. And with the market value, obviously, he can get a seven-year deal at $11 million per year, if you say. But it doesn't add up to the eight years the Leafs can offer him. So I do think he gets this done. We've seen the start he's having this year. He's a guy that continues to get better. I think this is a guy that can score 50 goals this season or in the next couple seasons as well. So losing him for nothing is would be a huge mistake for Toronto. So I think they just get this deal done, get him for eight years, and just build this team for the future. Yeah, and definitely when we were talking about this early in the offseason, I know we did see that he was saying that it would take a lot for him to leave Toronto. So I really do think that, like they say in this article, he they can pay him, I think they said 9.5 over eight years, and another team would have to pay him more than that over seven years to equal out the dollar a dollar amounts but uh and i really do think that toronto is the only place where we could see william nylander sign an eight-year deal because like you said he loves the city he's been very vocal about he he loves the team and i think the best william nylander is in toronto Oh, yeah, no, for sure. You just see overall, he seems like he fits well. He does fit perfectly on this Leafs team. And you also see that a lot of teams can offer this, but this is almost his last big contract. When you get to the seven, eight years, he'll be around 34, 35 at the end of this, I believe. Maybe a little uh, uh, younger. But overall, I think this is one of his last big deals. So if he can cash with the Leafs on an eight-year deal, 9.5, I think it's a win for both sides. Yeah, definitely. And if I was a betting man, I'd put my money on William Nylander staying in Toronto. I think it's only the matter of a, a, you know, a couple of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars before we finally see uh, ink to paper. And I know that his agent has been working very tirelessly over this offseason and early into the season to get this deal done. And I know it's coming soon. It feels like it's coming soon. Uh, I just really hope that they get it hammered out and that we can see it uh, before the July 1st deadline uh, or the July 1st, the January 1st deadline. Uh, and uh, we're just happy to see Nylander having such a great start to this season. And we really want to see a deal done soon. But we're going to get into our next topic of the video here. And that is big trade incoming. And as we take a look from uh, David P uh, Pagnota on Twitter, he says the St. Louis Blues GM Doug Arnold Sean was taking in the Hawks and Leafs game the other night, which proposes the que question, was he there scouting a Leafs player? Because we might see a trade for for uh from toronto to st louis for a defenseman i know a lot of our uh our loyal viewers want to see a defenseman traded to toronto and just taking at the look at the defenseman list here i'm not going to go down through it all one name that sticks out to me is colton pareko he he's right now at 6.5 aav and we're going to take a look at his stats here now uh on hockey reference Last year, he did put up 27 points, uh, and the year before had 35, but the big part uh, here is his defensive side of the game. He's one of the best shot blockers in the entire league, had 144 last year, 169 the year before. He can also throw his weight around a bit out there as well, Mark. Obviously, uh, I know a lot of our, like we said, a lot of our uh, people we see down in the comment section have been saying they really want to see a big D-man, and I really do think Colton Pareko is the perfect fit for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And you kind of look at Colton Pareko, and this is a guy that's six foot six, two 230 pounds. He's a right-handed shot, and this is the type of guy that's going to help you clear nets. He's going to be huge on the ice, and by that I mean a huge presence where he's going to throw his hits, he's going to block shots, and just overall, I think he might be the perfect fit. I think his contract is five or six more years at 6.5. So if you can get this guy on that contract, maybe move out a guy like Timothy Lilgren and another contract or two, I think he's a perfect fit for this team. Yeah, definitely. I could even see maybe throwing Jake McCabe's name out there a little bit. We might see him involved in these talks as well. Uh, I really do think they kind of have a similar style of game, but obviously Colton Pareko has been a more established uh, defensive defenseman in this league. He's been one of the best defensive defensemen uh, in the NHL over the past few years. Like we said in here, is a high shot block total, and I think this is what 
the Leafs defense is missing is a guy who just goes out there, throws his body around, blocking shots, and I know they do have a few guys there that do that, but if you bring in a guy who solely does that, it's really going to boost these chances from other teams, and it's really going to help the goaltending out as well. Yeah, and that's the big thing, too. You can kind of pair Morgan Riley with a guy like Pareko. I'd like to keep McCabe where it's a $2 million contract, so it's a kind of cheap, team-friendly contract. But you could see the situation where if Klingberg maybe doesn't work out, maybe he's a salary filler in this, I don't think you're going to get any money retained on a guy like Pareko. But I think they're going to be looking for a guy like maybe Timothy Logren, Nick Robertson, and a couple picks or prospects to get a guy like this from St. Louis. The Leafs and St. Louis did make a trade last year, so the teams are familiar. I know we have different GMs now, but overall, they had good chemistry of trades in the uh, recent future. So I think a guy like this is a high possibility. I think he fits perfectly, like you said, with the hitting, blocking shots, and defensive sound in his game. So I'm just excited to see if this does progress anywhere. Yeah, it'll be definitely interesting to see what happens over these coming weeks if we do see some talks intensify because I know a lot of our uh, viewers would love to see a, a big name D-man in Toronto and Colton Pareko is a guy who I've been following uh, for quite a while and I really do like his game. Had him in fantasy a couple years, just want to throw that out there. He's a great, great fantasy player if you're playing fantasy hockey, pick him up. But like we said here, Colton Pareko, a great fit in Toronto and we'll keep you up to date if these talks intensify because me and Mark will be watching this very intently but we're going to get into everybody's favorite uh, uh, topic of the video here and that is comment of the day and the comment of the day of the day goes to Rob uh, he says Leafs desperately need two big tough gritty defensemen Zadorov and Pareko would work and Rob you read our minds we always uh, love to see you down in the comment section Rob thanks for your support uh, we see y'all down there all the time appreciate uh, the support but like we talked about here obviously Mark's a big Zadorov fan he'd, he'd, love, he'd love to see him in Toronto but you'd settle for Pareko too wouldn't you Mark? I mean, if we can get both of them and run a deep pairing of Zadorov on the left, Pareko on the right, and that's two six six guys, I wouldn't complain, honestly. Yeah, well, I don't think my, many teams would complain if they had Zadorov and Pareko on their team. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to go down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers, so we really appreciate it if you went down and hit the subscribe button. And let us know what your thoughts on all this is. What do you think about noise moving up? What do you think about the Colton Pareko trade possibly to Toronto and what do you think about the Nylander contract update uh, update we love to hear from you guys down in the comment section below and maybe you'll be featured on the next comment of the day and if you enjoy the Leafs make sure to check this video out popping up on your screen right now but I've been KC alongside my co-host Mark Pye keep your stick on the ice